Oh, I got this 1996 Briggs, uh, call it a three and a half horse, yeah, that's what it says on it. Uh, push mower engine here. And uh, this thing's like disgustingly dirty. As you can see, it's got a major problem there from the scrap yard. A hole knocked right through it. But the motor's not seized or anything. Standard plastic primer type uh, carburetor. Um, but the one thing about this motor, um, in, you know, kind of grungy in the combustion chamber, but, and it's got three eighths socket head bolts on it. It's one of the first things I noticed. It's not smaller than the half inch. Um, plastic intake manifold. Main thing about this motor was just how dirty it was. Like normally you have grass shavings and stuff, but this one, it was like oil and just dirt. It looked more like a rototiller motor. So you see there's still something on it. I've cleaned it up a lot here. But uh, just sandy, same thing on the bottom, like sand instead of grass. So I don't know what they were cutting. Maybe they had a driveway or something they cut the grass on, who knows. But I think I discovered uh, what its problem was. This uh, tube going from the crankcase uh, vent to the carburetor was, well, I tightened it up a turn and a half, put it that way. So it was like that. So it was very floppy. And uh, that, of course, would allow uh, oil mist to come out there and just flood everything. So I thought maybe it was broken off or stripped, but you turn it, well, a turn and a quarter and she tightened up. So I guess a person, if you had to, you could make it work. You got to back it off to that point to make it line up with the carburetor and then it's loose. But you could always, uh, I don't know, some type of gasket sealer there on the threads to fix that. But yeah, so if your if your motor's uh, peeing excessive quantities of oil out on uh, the exhaust side, that'd be something to check whether that tube was uh, loose. It seems strange. I think it got screwed in at the factory and left there, but who knows? Weird things happen. Unfortunately, it's also got a bent crankshaft, but which I discovered. Turn it around. Wiggles. So, all these years I'll have to devise something to straighten those press. I'll come up with something, but I haven't tested it yet. So, I've got, certainly got a lot of bent crankshafts over the years. So, anyway, that's uh, that's just kind of what a, a 96 Briggs looks like. It's got the, you know, newer combustion chamber and uh, this thing's just flat versus having a uh, bend in it there. Uh, oh, yeah, the other thing It's got a plastic recoil starter. It's got uh, Well, they're like wood screws that screw into it. That's how it got on and it wasn't aluminum or whatever they're normally made out of just a Standard uh, magnetron ignition. So anyway, that's my take on a um, How a 96 Briggs is constructed so, uh, just having some fun uh, removing the blade mount off of this 96 Briggs here. So I got my uh, homemade two-jaw puller there. It was a three-jaw, cheap one. The thread bit the dust on it. So I just used from here over on the jaws and the, what do you call them, connector pieces there. But the first thing I had to do was to uh, I take a regular, uh, I guess they're a 3 8 fine thread blade bolt. Bolt that screws in the crankshaft. And I drill um, a cup in the center, so that, uh, or cone, whatever you want to call it, so that the uh, uh, bolt there on the puller centers on that. And that's what I push against. Here you can see it's out about a quarter inch there. So I've already taken it apart and readjusted it. I, uh, I make sure that I have lots of thread engagement. Like I only had this out about uh, 3 8 inch from bottoming when I started pushing on it. You don't want to have, you know, two or three threads in the crankshaft and start pushing. Uh, the other thing I did, I, I heat this up, heat the blade mount up, get it to expand away from the crankshaft. I also put penetrating oil on it. And uh, also grease in between the, the puller and the bolt there. You want to reduce the friction. And like I say, this is just a simple, that's probably about a half inch plate. This uh, 5 8 fine thread. 
and uh, it works pretty good. It's a lot stronger than the original uh, three jaw puller was. So, like I said, the thread on it gave out. So, I think I found this one at a scrapyard actually. The the just the bolt itself, the nut welded on it. So then I drilled and tapped the half inch plate there and cut the wings on it and drilled and you know just fabricated it, fabric cobbled it or whatever. So. But it seems to work pretty good because lawnmower blades you need a two jaw, not a three jaw, to work on them. Oh, well, here's the engine internals. Got the standard plastic camshaft there. Uh, this one doesn't have um, the uh, compression release uh, spring-loaded one on the exhaust or intake, for that matter. Kind of different. Uh, there's the main reason I took it apart. It had a little bit of uh, water in the oil, so when I see that, I uh, I tear the piston out to uh, let the rings dry out. Uh, so it's got standard uh, 5 16 uh, thread on the conrod bolts, and and it's got the uh, steel gear on the crankshaft there that uh, I kind of like. Not better than a plastic one, anyway. So. Yeah. So it's got the uh, standard old style piston with the thicker rings. I kind of prefer those actually. But connecting rod looks good. Um, something inside there got me though. Sliced my thumb. It was uh, when I was. Uh, I see, I still had some blood in there. Uh, when I was uh, undoing the. Uh, connecting rod bolts. I have no idea. All of a sudden <laughs> blood started appearing. I didn't feel it. Still doesn't sting but I cleaned it out with peroxide. That so. Anyway should be all good. So basically what I do now I just uh, disassemble the motor and um, let it uh, dry out. Let it dry out and then you end up with oil and no water. So that uh, and then re-oil the cylinder, put it back together, put it up in the shed, never to be touched again. Who knows? Anyway, so that's uh, the inside of a very dirty 96 Briggs 3.5 horse.